Otherwise, there's so much noise. I'd like to present you a game framework uh, for the beatbox. Uh, so this presentation will be a little nerdy, maybe, and uh, well, it has been fun to do. I don't know if it will be fun to use or to watch, but uh, anyway, it's the occasion to present it. Uh, so first, what's the beatbox? The beatbox is a small console uh, that has been made for fun, of course. Uh, well, I will pass it to you. Uh, it's a tiny console, do it yourself, open source, open hardware, and. Um, the idea was to have a side project for fun, to build a console uh, because I like electronics, so what could I do? Well, a game console, of course. And uh, the aim is to be do-it-yourself do so, uh, so that other people could redo it themselves. So availability of the components so you don't have to, be, to, to buy uh, hundreds of thousands of the same chip to, have, to actually have the change to have one. Uh, so it, uh, a very simple uh, way to do that. You can do that in your uh, basement, which I did, uh, with no particular uh, skills or um, uh, hardware. Uh, so it's a kind of retro game control project because do-it-yourself generally means limited power, generally, uh, and it matches really well with the retro game concept, and uh, it's uh, fun to build some game. And in a way, it's really retro coding also because uh, I'll show you it's very low level. So the characteristics of can't <coughs> you can see, okay, uh, it's single board uh, computer or console. Uh, there is one chip on it only that was on the one of the simplicity of the design decisions. Uh, the output is on VGA. Uh, there is a 15-bit uh, output VGA. You got two USB, one micro SD input so that you can load the games. Uh, the CPU itself is a microcontroller, so you get in it uh, 168 uh, megahertz, one mega flash, so one game should make one meg maximum, and 192k of RAM, which means that at the typical resolution 640 by 480, you don't have enough room to store a single picture, uh, single screen uh, on, on RAM. So you have to generate it, and you have to raise the beam, meaning that. Uh, at the beginning, uh, you, you have to generate line by line very quickly, and uh, at the end of, uh, of the screen, you get a top, so you move your game and your uh, advanced sprites and go back and generate on the fly. So you cannot, uh, by example, if you want to output a uh, movie, you cannot remember what was the preceding frame to compress, for example, because you don't, you, you don't have enough memory. Uh, but that's make it fun. It's uh, basically the limitations that make it fun, because uh, Raspberry Pi 3 has, I don't know how many times the power of this. Uh, this is very tiny. And since it was too powerful, uh, I did also a Bitbox Micro, which is basically half the Bitbox in every uh, possible uh, element. So the size is roughly half. The number of uh, USB port is half. Uh, the number of micro SD uh, is half, meaning there is none. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, the CPU speed, the memory, uh, the resolution, everything is in half. Uh, so, so that's basically it. Uh, the development, ah, if you want to have a look. <coughs> so the development on this uh, is basically a retro coding. You directly on the bare metal, you don't have the room uh, to have a um, to have an operating system, uh, no driver, no libs. You gener you have your game and you run directly on the console, and you have to code everything by hand, which is fun f for some kind of people. Uh, <laughs> C development is easy. Generally, those are modern interfaces in retro uh, console uh, compared to retro console. You have USB, you have etc., and uh, the tool chain is a standard GCC. You you download that on uh, Ubuntu, by example, or um, Debian, uh, apt-get, uh, GCC are uh, embedded, and bam, you, you can develop for it. So it's quite simple uh, to develop. Uh, there are people who have developed uh, with this on Ubuntu, uh, Windows, Mac OS, and Haiku, of course. Thanks. 
uh, to some people here. Uh, so there is a PC backend. It's not really an emulator. It's basically an a re-implementation of the basic API, a kernel API. So it's basically a kind of lips to initialize uh, everything to simplify the development. Uh, and there is a re-implementation of this higher level API with SDL. So basically, you make all of your game uh, uh, high level stuff uh, and you code it on the PC and then you port it uh, on the bitbox. There is some people who developed completely a game uh, with the develop uh, with the uh, API and with the uh, uh, emulator, mm, let's call it like this, and uh, they send it to me and just with a recompilation it runs on the bitbox, which was nice for me. Uh, there is some generation. Some generation is basically uh, you write a byte on memory and it outputs uh, to the speaker. That's a kind of level of uh, hardware you have, so basically none. And uh, so you have to re. Uh, so, but there are existing libraries, very nice library for chip tunes, also made by somebody. <laughs> Thanks, Adrian. Uh, with a tracker to compose your songs and uh, to help you uh, having chip tunes uh, and. Uh, uh, USB handling is uh, particularly nice and simple uh, to write yourself in C, so there are libraries because it's really painful, in fact. Uh, handling a USB gamepad, etc., because it's difficult to make a gamepad that, you, that is pleasing to do, so I didn't want to do that myself. So I'm reusing USB standard gamepad that you can find uh, for very cheap. Um, and the graphics generation, there are kind of library also, available to avoid you for doing routine stuff, but you can uh, do it yourself and uh, the basic the, the basic uh, uh, I would say uh, thing about this console is not invented here. The thing is to redo everything yourself, so uh, it's perfectly understandable to, to drop everything, every uh, library is extra and recreate on your own, that's what's interesting for certain people. Uh, games and community, there are a few bitboxes around the world, a few dozen. Uh, there are small active core developers for making games or libraries. Uh, there are custom extensions, uh, hardware extensions, and uh, uh, video, uh, kind of video <laughs> output. Um, you can output on a TV, uh, not using uh, using uh, Scart and Peritel. Uh, so uh, the, there is some output to, to, to this that has been after the fact, that has been hacked uh, from the console it fell itself. Uh, there is an external port, uh, for uh, it's a geek port, so you can plug whatever you want and have external funny controllers or physical, uh, I don't know, buttons or what you want. So, and you have to, drive to, to do the driver yourself, of course. Etc. Uh, Etc. Etc. Et there is software index with uh, so far I think 26 entries uh, for uh, different software. So you can see there is a, a full motion video game. So decoding live from the SD card uh, directly outputs and decompressed uh, live. There is a, a port of uh, Boulder Dash. Uh, there is a, uh, I don't know. You, you can recognize some uh, old games over there. Uh, jumper games. Uh, Polarity, Rapid Ball, which is kind of a mobile game, uh, uh, Snake, <laughs> Forest, Tetris, uh, where is it? Yeah, some Alter Ego, it's port of uh, Super NES, and there are emulators <coughs> also, and uh, 8 bit emulators. It's a 32 bit console playing 16 bit games and emulating 8 bit uh, <laughs> systems. So the systems are, yeah, uh, there is Game Boy emulator, uh, ZX Spectrum emulator, and of course, uh, MO5, which is a Thomson, very, uh, it, it's a French computer, nobody knows, but I have, I had it in school, so I, <laughs> I, I, re I didn't uh, honestly write the emulator, it's just a port of existing emulators and uh, axing to the code to remove uh, mostly everything that is not, so, so that it could fit on the memory uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. there is a graphical uh, drum loop sequencer, there is a tracker for which there is no... Okay, and some... Uh, sorry? There is a screenshot in the link, I think. Ah, and the link. <laughs> if I can follow the link, yep. I should have one. Yeah, <laughs> no there isn't, uh, if it were. It should be okay. So it's a it's a tracker to compose your your sound directly on the beatbox. It's uh, for some work in progress. Uh, 
because uh, Bomberman clone, which is not finished, and many, 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 many prototypes of games which I didn't uh, finish, of course. <laughs> uh, let's get back to this. Um, so making games, how do you make games for the Bitbox? Well, uh, let's make a little survey quickly. Who knows game development in C? Quite a lot of people. Uh, handling, well, may, making uh, uh, simple games. Uh, general light based graphics, uh, sprite styles with collision, so making a small 2D, uh, making pixel graphics with game 2 2D level design with tile, by example, and compiling, cross compiling everything for an RM Cortex M4. It's, it, it, and compose music with a tracker for this. Uh, <laughs> It seems a little complicated. It is not every single task is quite not complicated, but if you don't know several of them, it can be a little uh, intimidating. So the idea was to lower the perceived uh, barrier to entry to build, program, and design some uh, simple games for the beatbox. So let's make a new survey. Who can draw a BMP5 with GIMP? <laughs> So the idea was to simplify the process and having a complete simple game with, uh, on a unique image. So you put it on the RD card, you put the RD card uh, on the console, and there is an interpreter uh, who loads the image in RAM and runs from this. And you then play the game. It's a Mario Maker for the beatbox, except you can redraw it yourself. <laughs> Restricted to certain kind of 2D games, but there can be several kind of gameplays. Uh, of course, it's very limited, and that's the idea, of course, to, to limit it. So the general workflows, there are the reference MD, you saw uh, kind of uh, documentation, you can read it. You store your BMP files on the SD card, and the reference generates some definitions, uh, the program reads them, and plays it, uh, or the PC emulator. Uh, so what do you need to do a four level 2D platformer and what, how do you put that in an image? And um, so basically to make a 2D game platformer such Twitter Infinite Runner, uh, you need to have world physics, how do you scroll, how do you jump, is there any gravity or not. Um, you, have, you need to have tile set graphics, so a little picture that will repeat uh, to make your level. Uh, you have to have your level tile maps, how do you order the different uh, levels. Uh, the sprite frames graphic, of course, the different frames, the different behaviors and movements. There are different ways to do that. You can have a, a full programming language uh, that it exists. Uh, there is a Mondrian, by example, it's a graphical programming language, but it doesn't really fit well uh, on the limited, very, very limited uh, image. So uh, you can also use presets. So you just have one sprite is always such kind of enemy. The idea was to mix a little bit those to be versa versatile enough and to fit in one. Uh, and you need to have music and sound effects. So how do you encode it? First, you start with a blank canvas. The canvas is 256 colors. So you can index it by number from 0 to 0 XFF. And uh, this number will be repeated quite a bit of time, so hence the name. Uh, two fifth, uh, so 256 color pixel by pixels on the bitmap. Uh, it's divided in uh, 16 by 16 squares uh, or 16 by 16 pixel, which means that with your color tiles and pixel per tiles, you see that there is a mapping between the tile, the number of the tiles, if you number the tiles themselves on your drawing, one pixel in a tile, you can have the top left pixel which represents the top left tile on the whole image and a color. So you can give a color and reference and there is a relationship with, with the tile, with the color, because the color has an index from 0 to uh, 0 XFF. Uh, so it can represent a tile, a pixel in the tile maybe, so let's use this. Uh, so this is by example a simple row canvas, but you can start from a blank one, it's just to show you the, how it's ordered. You see there is a color represented for each tile. So if you say color EB, it represents this tile. And if you say uh, color zero, it's uh, the other one. Uh, you don't have to start with that. You just have to start with a single palette, which is ordered like this. And uh, you can see that on your palette, uh, the position of the, of the color represents the position on your picture. That's so easier to, to draw. Now, how do you do the different drawings, the tiles? Well, you draw, the, you draw it on the canvas. The sprite frame, you draw them on the canvas, but you can have several tiles. To, to, to draw them. And the tile map, uh, the tile map meaning your levels, well, you will draw with a color referencing the tile that you precedingly draw on the canvas. Let's make an example. The top left tile is number 00, so you draw black on your 
uh, on your level. Um, for now, we have no behaviors. We didn't say that this is some sky, this is something that blocks the player, etc. So, uh, for example, here we have some tiles on the top left. So we have nine tiles in plus one, and a level on the, uh, under it. The, the sky over there is black, meaning that it will reference this small, oops, this small uh, here. And you see here the terrain, maybe you don't show it, but it corresponds to the color of this tile here, 16 by 16, etc., etc. So you can draw your level like that. Uh, you can put some sprites. There are some sprites over there, so there are, for example, five uh, elements, and you can see the uh, green points, meaning that these points will be the hitbox of the uh, of the sprites. You can have bigger sprites, so your hitbox will be uh, separated on several sprites, or you will scan after that where it is. How do you represent that on your level? That's easy. Uh, the first tile, uh, the first frame of the uh, animation is in number 40, so you put color number 40 on your level. You still cannot play it, it's just display. You can have another sprite, bigger one, with uh, another hitbox, by example. This one has only two frames. We didn't say how to animate it. There are five tiles, special tiles at the bottom, which are here to define all of the um, behaviors. Uh, there is a minimap on the bottom left. Uh, maybe you've seen that uh, in the preceding. The minimap shows you that each pixel here represents a tile on your whole drawing. And um, there is preset colors for saying, well, this, th this is the ground, this is the sky, this will kill you if you uh, go into it, etc., etc. And uh, this color here is the color of the first level. So you ca if, you, if the program needs to find the first level, it's here. Uh, the number of levels, objects, info. Uh, there is one tile where you can reference how your objects will behave. You can specify three things with three pixels, basically per line per uh, object. First one, uh, well, four with uh, the wh where is position your uh, your object. The first is the physics. How does it walk? How does the uh, your game? Is it standing? Is it walking? Does it chase the player? Does it, etc. The number, uh, second one is how. What does it do when you collide with a player? Does it give a bonus? Does it um, kill you? Uh, does it make you end the level, etc. And another one meaning uh, what is, what do I do after be killed? Do I spawn another sprite? So you can have interaction. For example, if you jump on a mushroom, by example. It spawns another one uh, that is a coin, and it spawns another one with an animation for giving you points, by example. So you can have some combinations between your different behavior. There are lots and lots of different behavior. Uh, I will show you maybe if I got time in the reference, you can see that. But uh, you can mix and match different uh, way too. For the movement, yeah, you have static, move once, and then disappear, bullet, so it go, go fast through the screen. Left, right, walk, walk and fall if uh, the enemy uh, walk and jump sometimes. The sign uh, pattern, by example, the collision. Does it kill the player? Does it uh, switch some tiles from one level to, to from one identity to the next one if you jump to it? For example, you, have, you can have keys to open some doors, by example, with that uh, kind of behavior. And uh, what does it do when, you, when you're killed? You can spawn another sprite. <coughs> so. You can see there the minimap and the different price. And quickly, you can finish it with some titles. Here you have some four titles for four levels. Um, you have some tiles also for uh, for another levels. Uh, you have some pixel defined here at the beginning to give you per level the number. Uh, what is the world physics of your game? And I didn't add uh, music. I'll show you. You can also use a real map editor. I, I just put in, uh, I just created some uh, something to use a real map editor and then output to an image. But maybe le 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 let me show you the, the images that are that that you can do with that. Uh, can I do it? Ah, can I do it better? So this one is a finished game. I will show you how it works. Uh, this one maybe you've heard about. <laughs> <laughs> So you can do that like that. It's uh, basically uh, auto scroll with infinite jumps, and you you die when you touch anything. Uh, maybe you've heard of this one also. Yeah. 
Uh, this, is this is basically a four-level uh, Mario Bros. Uh, not everything is finished, not everything is, uh, but you can compose everything with uh, the different elements I told you. You can see how are, are, are positioned the different uh, levels, what are the different types and what are the different sprites. Uh, there is also this one, which is absolutely not finished, but it could be done, maybe. And uh, this one is a space shooter, a tiny space shooter. Uh, this one is a, uh, well, I mean, Bit, bit a bit ashamed of the graphics, but uh, <laughs> uh, it should be um, kind of ghosts and goblins. Uh, all uh, uh, okay. Um, we'll have to have a small demo. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, so does it work? Okay. Can you see something? Okay. This one is bad. So basically, uh, this is the demo uh, I've shown you. Uh, Maybe let's start with the. Uh, So this one is the one that I've shown you uh, as a graphics. So it's a very simple title, uh, but it's directly read from the bitmap graphics. Uh, I didn't define numbers on the demo. So you have <laughs> the, the guy. You can jump. Uh, you can. Uh, so you can see that the gravity is off because you 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 can jump very high. Um, there is some uh, coins over there, so it's a sprite that doesn't move except uh, that has one frame moves a little bit and then uh, just uh, if you touch it, it's killed. There, there is no output and uh, you can, uh, and if you got one, yeah, you have some. Uh, so let's just take another one. This one is demo game, maybe a little more uh, graphically less advanced, but and you can, uh, there's our letters, uh, there are so, uh, okay, I'm bad. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you can go through the second level, you can uh, go to the second le le level is a shooter uh, on this game. Le let's show you maybe a shooter, how you can. Space Force. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it works actually, this one. Uh, yes, it does. Uh, you cannot shoot, in fact, because, <laughs> I, <laughs> because I didn't call the, the shooter. So you have to. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so, okay, I have uh, failed. Okay, uh, maybe, maybe the, the Mario, uh, it was just a simple, yeah. So it's the first level. There, uh, there is sound, uh, actually, for this one with the first level of Mario. Uh, the, the first sound of Mario, but you can see that. And I'm bad, okay. <laughs> but it's playable. It's basically playable. So it's, back in, but, uh, it's really a work in progress. Uh, you can, uh, but you can try yourself to build on another one. You can draw. All you need is GIMP and the emulator, which is running and run on the PC. And uh, yeah, that basically it. And uh, you can use your same drawing to run it on the big box directly. That's it. Okay. So it's only uh, platform games, or are there plans to allow like top-down games, maybe? There are too many ideas, but uh, yes, you can do. Uh, well, you, you could do top-down games with the gravity because you fall. You you, you have a maximum uh, vertical, so you could do that with with it with vertical. Uh, with, with uh, no jumps, vertical uh, levels, and uh, the gravity, it could be, uh, yeah, you, you, you could uh, add a top down. Uh, going up would mean that you can have a negative gravity. It could be done, of course. Uh, much, yeah, the, the idea is that uh, we will add uh, some uh, world physics uh, from and expanding uh, how, how what the number of games uh, you can do. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, is the uh, the framework interpreting the image, or are you translating it into something, transpiling it, compiling it? Uh, no, because uh, the bitbox. Oh, sorry. Yeah. The, the question is, uh, is there any uh, transpiling or recompilation of the uh, image uh, in in RAM? No, because the bitbox is uh, too constrained for that, and so it directly reads the content of the game uh, in memory. It dumps, uh, it's basically a dump of your image in memory and interpreting and generating the graphics on the fly. Uh, it's possible to create um, multiplayer games? No. No, no, not for no. Uh, I don't know, maybe, well, of course, if you've got a compiler, 
uh, sorry, the question was, uh, can you make multiplayer games? Well, if you got a good compiler and uh, <laughs> you have enough time, you could. Uh, for now, it's a little bit far-fetched uh, for from this, but yeah, why, why not? There are two USB. Uh, you should. Uh, you can. Have